making calls, you know. <laughs> wasn't anything wrong with your phone, okay? See this right here? Okay, just push that. Now you can hear, all right? So we thought, you know, man, these phones, there's something messed up with these phones. It's like, no, there's nothing wrong with the phone, okay? So here's the thing. When we get saved, God gives us a new nature. God gives us this new craving out of that nature. And God has filled us with this new power source. And we have to get used to using that, like access that. Jesus told his disciples, I'm leaving you, but I'm leaving you with the Holy Spirit. And he will come alongside. As a matter of fact, he will come inside you and he will guide you into all truth. Once again, we're reminded that we cannot do this alone. We cannot depend on our own power. We cannot trust in our own selves. But we need that nature craving power source. And they all go together. Philippians 2.13 says, For God is working in you, giving you the desire to obey him and the power to do what pleases him. So if you feel like you don't, as a believer in Christ, for instance, if you feel like you don't have enough to get you to the next step, that's you. That's not God. That's you. That's not the power. It's you have the power. You have everything you need, according to this. Everything you need. But we have to access that. Like we were just singing. Make us aware of your presence. Like the Holy Spirit is here. The Holy Spirit lives inside believers. So we have believers here. The Holy Spirit is here. His presence is here, but make us aware of that presence. So the same thing here, this new power source. It's like, I need that power source, but I need to trust in that to get growing. So new nature, new craving, new power source. Those are the three things that I'm going to tell you that God does for you and me when we turn our lives over to him. Now let's talk about the thing that you and I need to do now that he's made that change. You're going to need a new workout. How many of you love to work out? Okay. Come on, how many of you love to work out? Come on, go ahead, raise your hand. Okay, how many of you don't love to work out, but you love the results from working out? Okay. How many of you would love to just have the results without the workout? Okay, all right, me too. All right, let's pray and get out of here. So, but you got to get this. If you want to get growing, you got to get this part of it, okay? Because some of us are just showing up to grow up, okay? We're thinking if we just come into a room at 14722 Clark Avenue at, at 9 o'clock and 10 o'clock and, you know, come for this and come for that, we're going to, we come in and all of a sudden it's like, ooh, grow. <laughs> you know, we sit, we listen, we read, we, we pray, we sing, and we walk out, oh, I have grown by so much. And I get out in the parking lot, and I'm like, what are you looking at? And what's wrong with you? I'm hungry. Let's go eat. We go to the restaurant. We're like, come on, come on, come on, hurry up. We've grown. G-R-O-A-N. We start groaning instead of growing, right? But we've been to church. You know, my daughter... My, Two daughters, they were both waitresses, and they said some of the worst people were the Christians that came in to eat after church on Sunday. And I was like, okay, I'll quit coming in. I'm sorry. <laughs> right? But it's like, man, we want to grow up. You've got you to get this, that, that it's not just about showing up. It's not just about you saying, well, I'm a believer now, and now God's going to take care of everything. God has already taken care of everything, but he's given you a new nature and a new power to access to be able to do the things that he calls you to do. But guess what? He's going to call you to do something. He's going to ask you to do something that you don't think you can do, but you already have the nature and the craving and the power to do it. You just don't trust that. And so you're thinking, well, I can't really do that. And he's like, no, I got to work you out then. We got to work it out. 
I gotta train you to do better. I gotta train you to become stronger because I've got other plans for you that I wanna train you to do and you can't do it now because you're, you're just trying instead of training. And so I'm, I, wanna, I wanna grow you by giving you this new workout. And it's, it's, it's awesome right here in 2 Peter that Peter's talking about this. He's saying in the New Living Translation, and I know mine said it a little bit different, but it says, in view of all this, make every effort to respond to God's promises. Make every effort. Isn't that you? Like God's saying that to you. Like make every effort. Like you do something. God's not going to do for you what you can do, okay? God, God does his part, and then he says, now you do this. And we're not talking about salvation here. We're not talking about, well, you need to do this to be saved or keep your salvation. We're talking about that you are this person that's alive, and so do this. We expect, I expect my little granddaughter, Harper, she's starting to walk, and she's starting to say things, and she's starting to, I mean, I can hear her, and she says, Papa, isn't that like the sweetest word on the planet? <laughs> it is for me, Papa. It's like one of the only words she knows, you know? It's like, Papa. And now she calls Don, Guy. <laughs> so, a whole other reason for that. I don't want to explain it, okay? <laughs> but she starts calling us out. Now she's saying, you know, she says, I love you. But it sounds like, alalu, right? So you guys can practice that with each other, you know, right? But, but, but what, what we want to see is she is so cute and so awesome, but you know what we're expecting? That she's going to grow, right? And she's going to grow, and she's going to become a teenage little girl. And this is where I'm just going to enjoy watching those parents. Like, it's going to be so awesome. I cannot wait. Like, what's the rule? That is the lamest thing I've ever heard. You should be able to stay out as long as you want. You can eat whatever you want. You know, if you don't want to go to church, that's fine. I'm going to make their own, you know. No, we're, we're expecting that she's going to grow, right? All our kids are going to grow. We're expecting our kids to grow. We don't want them to keep, you know, we, we, we think, oh, they're so cute. And then they become teenagers. You're like, Man, how can we lock them up for a few years? Right? No, but they're awesome. They start, they start growing. Where they're growing in that, they're, they're asking questions. They're trying to develop that own, their own identity. They're becoming their own person, right? And so we want to, we want to, you know, let that happen. And we want to be a part of that. And then, you know, there's, there's the parents, so there's these stages of growth, and in this workout, it's like, man, you need to work these things out into your life. It's saying, add to your life, add to your life, moral excellence, self-control, endurance, you know, all these things. You add those, and one leads to the other, right? So you begin to work out, and that leads to this, and that leads to this. And it says, if you develop like this, you become more useful and productive right? You become more useful and productive. It says add every effort to this. And the more you grow like this, the more useful and productive you become. But if you fail to develop like this, you become blind or short-sighted and you can't see ahead. You can only see what's right in front of you. So we need to, as it says, work hard to prove that we're not just a fan of Jesus, but we're fully devoted to following Jesus. Timothy said it this way in 1 Timothy 4, 7, and 8, spend your time and energy in training yourself for spiritual fitness. Physical exercise has some value, but spiritual exercise is much more important for it promises a reward in both this life and the next. So spiritual exercise. I read a, a, a statement this week from a guy named Brad Lominick. He's the, like the CEO of Catalyst, which is a leadership thing. And he said, the path to being a better leader is paved with the asphalt of the habits we develop. 
And I, I just want to say it this way, the pathway to being a better person or a better Christian, a better follower of, of Christ is paved on the asphalt of the habits we develop. He says, more than 40% of the things we do throughout the day aren't the result of decisions, but rather habits that we formed. So, <laughs> if we're going to get growing, we got to get this whole workout thing. It's about training, not trying. It's about growing up, not just showing up. So, last thing here. So we got a new nature, we got new craving out of that new nature, and we want to take care of that healthy craving and fill it with spiritual things. And then we got, uh, we got the new power source to take care of all that, to get us to do those things. And we get a new workout. And I want to tell you this, that when you begin to work out, you want someone like God who's going to push you to really work out. Because in and of yourself, you're probably not going to do it like you should. But you need God in your life to push you. And John 15 talks about how that he prunes the branches that are growing to get more growth, right? So as we're growing, God is still working in our lives to, to, to help us grow more. Not grown more, but grow more and become more productive, more useful. So let me ask you this. What is God doing in your life right now that his purpose for you is growth? And maybe you're seeing it as a grown thing. And you're asking God why question really is, what? God, what do you want to produce in my life? What are you doing to help me grow? What do you want me to do for the growth step? Because here's the target. The target is to become more like Jesus, right? For God knew his people in advance, and he chose them to become like his son. John the Baptist said, he must increase, I must decrease. So here's our picture today. If you want to really get growing, we're going to move to a time of communion because this table right here is the picture of get growing. It's the picture of giving your life for God's glory and, and seeing that life comes through death to self and alive in him. So here's what I want you to do. I just want you to bow your head and close your eyes. <clears throat> and I'm going to have the, the deacons, the servers, come on up and prepare the table for us. Today we're going to do this by having the, the, our servers actually come and bring you a tray and serve you today. Sometimes we do it where we have you come up to the table. So um, guys, go ahead and, and get the table ready. But uh, as sometimes we do it where we have tables up here and we ask you to come up and get those elements. Today we're going to have you stay seated. And this is why. I want you to think about what is it that God's doing in your life to get you to grow and to become more like Jesus and less like yourself. Right here in your chair, right now, right in that seat, I just want you to bow your head and close your eyes. And I want to ask you this. Have you personally accepted Jesus Christ into your life? And if you've never invited Jesus into your life, the, the communion part is really something that you, know, you shouldn't even do because it doesn't really have that meaning to you yet. And, and we're okay with that. If, you, if you're like, yeah, I'm taking that step yet. I'm not ready for that. I'll just pass the elements as they come by me. That's, 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 that's what you should do if you haven't accepted Christ as your Savior. 
this is for believers, and, and, and we want you to be a part of it. So, if you haven't accepted Christ, but today you want to do that, right there in your seat, I want you to pray something like this. Dear Lord Jesus, I just, I know I'm a sinner, and I, I know that I've, I've, I've walked away from you, or I've been away from you, or I just know that my life's not right. And I want to get my life right with you. So Lord Jesus, I, I want to ask you to forgive me for my sin. I know that you died on the cross for my sin. Your body was broken and your blood was shed as an offering for my sin. And I want to invite you to come into my life as my Lord and as my Savior. And Lord Jesus, I want to grow. I don't want to just attend things. I want to grow in my relationship with you. I want to abide in this relationship. So teach me how to do that as I follow you. Maybe you're here today, and if that's you, and you prayed that prayer to invite Jesus to come into your life, this is a way of proclaiming that. So if you're here today, and you just now received Jesus as your Savior, I want to invite you to take the elements. But if you're here, and you haven't taken that step yet, and you're not ready, it's okay. Just pass the elements along. If you're here today, and you know Jesus as your Savior, this is the time for you. We're right there in your seat. You want to make sure through confession of sin, through prayer of rededication, recommitting your heart and life to the growth and the changes and the desire that God wants and has for you to become more like Jesus, to take that amazing love of Christ and really let it lead you in your life. So Lord Jesus, we come before you right now as believers in Christ, as, as your followers, to say we love you, forgive us for ways we have fallen away from that, that love, and get us back there today. Lord Jesus, as we take these elements, we are saying to you, we're committed as fully devoted followers. We are taking, we, were, we are eating, we are drinking to say we love you, we thank you, and we live for you. In Jesus' name, amen. So here's what I want, I want us to do. I'm going to have just the servers come up. And first of all, they're going to take a tray of the bread, and they're going to take that, and they're going to hand that out. Just take a piece of that bread and hang on to it, and then we'll partake of it together. And while they're passing this out, the band's going to kind of lead us through some, some music about the amazing love of Christ.
that night with the disciples Jesus took bread and he broke it and he gave it to the disciples and he said to each of them take eat for this is my body which is broken for you and that night he was symbolizing what was getting ready to happen on the cross for all of us and they took that to symbolize that his body broken for us. We take this today believing that his body broken for me. He said, take eat, this is my body. The Bible goes on to say that he took a cup and gave it to the disciples. And so I'm going to have the service come. They're going to take a tray, do the same thing, pass that out, take that, hang on to it, and we'll take it together.